I'm Sophie Malone, and this is Herstory. Today, I'm going to be Susan B. Anthony. Let's open those polls. Susan B. Anthony was born on February 15, 1820, in Massachusetts. She had six brothers and sisters and was born into a Quaker family. That means they did not believe in singing, dancing, or wearing fancy clothes. But they did believe that girls should get an education just like boys, so Susan learned alongside her brothers. One day, Susan came home from school upset because the teacher wouldn't teach the girls the same math as the boys. Her father was like, oh, no way, we can have that. And he set up his own school where his daughters could learn the same as his sons. He also encouraged all of his children to discuss important issues going on in the world, including the fight against slavery. In 1837, a big economic depression happened, and many families, including Susan's, lost all of their possessions. They even sold their eyeglasses and their underwear. Susan decided, hmm, I think I need a job. She became a teacher one of the only jobs available to women at that time. Soon, Susan met a new friend, Elizabeth Caddy Stanton. Susan didn't know it then, but they would be friends for life. Elizabeth was also a pioneer in women's rights, and together they were rebels in every way, including wearing a new style of skirt called bloomers, skirts that ended just below the knee over the pants. Elizabeth was like, Oh my gosh, Susan, look, you can see my legs. Bloomers were considered shocking at the time. In 1857, Susan shocked the New York State Teachers Convention when she was like, so here's the deal, people. We need to let black and white children, boys and girls, attend the same schools. People were like, what are you, cuckoo? Then, in 1860, Thanks to the efforts of Susan and Elizabeth, New York State allowed married women the right to own property and carry businesses in their own names. When the Civil War began on April 12, 1861, Elizabeth went to Susan and said, Let's put the fight for like women's rights like temporarily aside. Unfortunately, this would turn out to be a decision that they would both regret. With the end of Civil War in April 1865, Women's suffrage, which meant the fight for women's right to vote, became even more important. A new amendment to the Constitution was proposed, which would give all citizens the right to vote, white and African American, but at the time, a citizen would only define as men. Susan was like, we gotta change that! Women are citizens too! Susan went home to Rochester just in time to vote in the 1872 national election. Three weeks later, she was arrested for her vote. When she went to trial, the judge made his decision even before Susan's lawyer had to say something. He was like, You are guilty. And need to pay $100 for a fine. But Susan was like, I'm not paying it, and decided to fight. Her trial put the issue of women's suffrage on the front of newspapers. Women now spoke in public and worked in more jobs. In some places, they could even vote in local elections. Suffrage groups existed across the country, and more and more women were joining. But Susan and Elizabeth still had a long way to go. From 1877 to 1883, Susan went from state to state campaigning for women's suffrage and went to Washington, D.C. each year to speak to Congress. In 1887, Congress voted for the first time on an amendment to the Constitution to give women the right to vote. It didn't pass, but just getting the vote to Congress was a partial victory. By 1896, states such as Wyoming, Colorado, Idaho, and Utah passed laws for women's right to vote. In 1902, Elizabeth passed away shortly before her 87th birthday. The funeral was small, and according to Elizabeth's wishes, she was buried with a picture of her best friend, Susan. Even after Elizabeth's passing, Susan kept up with the fight. In 1905, Susan met with President Teddy Roosevelt. She asked him for his help giving women the right to vote nationwide by asking Congress to amend the Constitution. He was like, oh yeah, 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 sure, I'll totally do that. 
but President Roosevelt did not ask them. At Susan's 86th birthday celebration, she stood up and told women that they needed to keep fighting. Failure is impossible. That was her last public speech. On March 13, 1906, Susan died. Susan never lived to see women get the right to vote, but if all of her hard work paid off, on August 18, 1920, when the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was passed, it finally gave women the right to vote. And because Susan was such a pioneer for women's rights, on July 2, 1979, she even got her very own coin made in her honor, the Susan B. Anthony dollar. And the rest you ask? The rest? That's history. Thanks for watching.